As a PC user, there are a lot of new laptops out there and also a brand new processor. Qualcomm announced the Snapdragon Excellent chipset, which is an ARM-based processor for Windows PCs. And it's exciting because there are a ton of laptops that you can pick from with great battery life and great performance. And today I have one, two, three, four, five, six laptops here. And I'm going to show you which is the best one to pick for whatever your needs are. Now, the cool thing about this is that I'm not talking about specs or performance. We're talking about the laptops themselves, what they bring to the table, what they offer from the individual manufacturers. So let's jump in. Hey guys, Thundee E here and welcome to the channel. And today we're taking a look at laptops that are powered by the Snapdragon Excellent chipset to find out which is the best one for you and also which is the best at any of the different categories. And we're looking at a couple of things here. So we're looking at, of course, the displays of the laptops, battery life, speakers, that kind of stuff, the day-to-day -day things that you can actually do with this. I will not be covering any gaming on this laptop. We've kind of seen gaming on Snapdragon X Elite already. Uh, there's still some drivers that should be updated, so we're waiting for that from Qualcomm to see. But I wanna talk about each and every one here. Now, all these laptops come in different sizes and formats, but let's take a look at the very first one. This is the Asus VivoBook S15. And this is a VivoBook. It's got a nice OLED display full keyboard with num keys on the side. One of the cool things you find that it does have a manual security lock for your camera, your webcam, and it has a plethora of ports, full HDMI, um, two USB type C ports, a micro SD card slot, which you will find a lot of manufacturers adding. Please take it away and give us a full size SD card. Everyone, please do that. And two USB type C ports. Now, when it comes to ports and flexibility, this has the most ports for any of the laptops here. I definitely like that. And the price, of course, is on screen. Next up, we have the HP Omnibook. Now, this is a compact 14-inch laptop. Has a very simplistic design, lovely, nice keyboard. You've also got a power button, really nice centralized touchpad. And it's got a display that is maximum brightness at 400. Also has a physical lock for the uh, webcam as well, which is nice. And it comes with only three ports, two USB type C on the left hand side. And on the right, we have a full USB type A, but I do like that nice lip action here, allowing you to have more access to the port, the port people. Of overall, this is a nice laptop and very slim and slender. Now, next up, we have the Dell XPS 13, which has a uniquely sleek design as you expect from Dell. That flush uh, trackpad area that feels like it's just all, all one unit. The nice black um, color, colorway, the flat keyboard profile. Of course, you have the touch sensitive buttons at the top, which is still nice. Uh, and you've got a nice display as well. This does not have any physical lock for the webcam and only comes with two ports, two USB Type-C ports on either side. So very limited there in ports. When we move over to the Samsung, Samsung has this, the Galaxy Book Edge 4. Um, this has a full keyboard layout, 16 inch variant. There is, I believe, a 13 inch variant. Uh, it's got an OLED display from Samsung, which you expect. It can be very vibrant and punchy. Full keyboard with num keys. The trackpad is slightly off to the left, which is a bit annoying for me. Uh, we do have another micro SD card slot here on the right hand side, uh, two USB Type-C ports, HDMI 2.1 and full USB. Again, the most amount of ports goes to the ASUS, but if you want a bigger laptop with more screen real estate, this is where you go. Lenovo comes in with the Yoga 7X. Now it's very compact. This is a design that I will say Hayato loves. I say it's one you will love once you actually pick it up but it's still a nice laptop. You've got uh, top firing speakers, trackpad feels a little bit more centralized. You do have uh, a digital button here to, of course, lock up your webcam, two USB Type-C ports on the left-hand side and one on the right. Very light and compact. I do like the way it looks and the OLED display is pretty nice. And then finally, we have the Surface Pro. Now the Surface Pro powered by the Snapdragon Exelite chipset is a Surface that you would expect, something with a detachable keyboard, and of course the Surface Pen, which is nice. You do have a nice sharp display. 
Um, and you also have two USB Type-C ports on the left-hand side, the proprietary Surface uh, plug on the right, and that's pretty much it. So we've got many devices with different form factors. You've seen the prices on screens. So how well do they fare in the different categories? Let's start off with the display. That is one of the most important things on a laptop because you have to see what you're looking at and enjoy that. So we're gonna start off ranking displays from the bottom to the top. And the worst display comes from HP. This is a display that's 400 nits. It is not bright. Uh, you can see the spec, full specs on screen. It's also a display that is very, very reflective. And if you are by a window, which I have here, you're not going to see anything on this display. So it's pretty much at the bottom uh, of the spectrum. Now, the fifth display actually to me goes to the Dell XPS 13. It's a lovely laptop, but that display really kind of pulls it back. It's got a matte finish to it. It's nice, it's, it's still bright enough to see, but it's not as punchy as I'd like. You do, you can get different variants on the display. So depending on the combination, you can get an OLED display or a full HD um, IPS panel. So that's basically the fifth best display. Now, this is where it gets tricky because everybody here has a little spicy, fresh OLED here. But my next one here is the ASUS VivoBook S15. This display is lovely. It's a nice OLED display, but not as bright as I would like it to be. I think it's sharp and responsive. It's also not a touchscreen. It's only a device that isn't a touchscreen. Now, honestly, I don't mind, but as a Windows user, because that's now more integrated into Windows, I give that a slight little ding, uh, but honestly, it's really not that important, but it's still a good display overall. Now, we're in the top three here, and this is where it becomes a little bit difficult. I will give my third best display to the Surface Pro. It's really nice, really punchy, good colors, good balance overall. I think it hits all the right marks as a display. It's bright, but maybe not as bright, but it has also, also good color balance and just looks really lovely, especially when you're watching content on this. So Surface Pro gets the third best display. Now this comes up between, the final two is between Samsung and Lenovo, where I give the numbers two spot to Samsung. Samsung display is a lovely display, especially for its screen size, it looks really good and can be a little bit extra punchy, which is what you expect from Samsung displays. Like you see, that wallpaper looks absolutely gorgeous on it and also watching content looks really good. Uh, just the punchy mess might be just a little bit much, even for me, uh, and it's something you can still tune down, but of course not everybody knows how to do that, so I give Samsung the number two spot. And Lenovo takes the number one spot with this place. Looks very nice and vibrant. Also the color uh, balance of it is really good. Plus it's not as reflective as the other displays when you're actually watching content on there. So you're looking at content or just, you know, typing or doing work on that display. It looks very good. So display is out the window. What about audio? We've got built-in speakers here. You might be watching content or listening to it. I can tell you the best or worst, but I want you to listen to all of them. But anyway, let's go ahead and start the video. Let's go ahead and start the video. This one's dope. But anyway, let's go ahead and start the video. This one's dope. But anyway, let's go ahead and start the video. What is this one's dope? But anyway, let's go ahead and stop the video. This one is this one's dope. But anyway, let's go ahead and stop the video. Okay, so Windows, hear me out. You guys have improved over the years in getting your speakers better, but it still has a long way to go in terms of certain aspects. The Dell is the worst speaker out of all of them. It's very tinny, it's tiny, it just, nothing comes out pretty clear on that. Followed by HP, which is not far off from where the speakers actually handle or land. So that is something that's a bit disappointing there. And then you have the Samsung speakers, which actually are very bassy. So if you're listening to a lot of house music, maybe hip hop, you're gonna enjoy it. it. It will work well for you there, but if you're listening to my YouTube video, it's too much bass. I know I have bass in my voice, but not that much. So, you know, <laughs> pay attention to that. And number three in speakers are the Surface Pro. So it's got enough 
off base. High end is actually pretty good. The mids just, it's very muddled. Uh, even though it may sound loud, um, conversations sound like, you know, it sounds like there's a wave around me while I'm talking. That's the best way, at least I would describe it. Still good, uh, but definitely can use improvement. My number two spot goes to Lenovo, which has zero low end, which is surprising for it to be number two. But the highs are clear and clean, and whenever you're listening to anything, it comes out really clean. Low end is just almost not visible. And taking the top spot is ASUS, which still has a muddled, you know, muddled mids, but still clear enough and sharper than the rest of them. I would say the loudest is probably the Surface in terms of just if you want something loud, uh, Surface and the Samsung kind of hit those marks there. But I think this is where Windows uh, manufacturers need to make sure, for number one, your speakers should be on top, Samsung. If you did that, that might actually help more. And also, you know, get some tweeters and different drivers and then not just a speaker to help things out. Do some tuning, Harmacon, you have that. You've got partnerships. Enough ranting, move that to the side. Okay, so we know how the speakers are for these laptops. What about battery life? This is where the Snapdragon X Elite laptop really shines because they have some really good battery life metrics. Now, all the different manufacturers have told them us some you know, really good uh, numbers. ASUS claims about 16 hours of battery life. Dell claims closer to about 20. HP claims about 27. Samsung was in the 22s. Lenovo is around the 16s. Surface is around the, I believe, 12 to 14. Different numbers all around. I can safely say that battery life is good. As a Windows user, you will enjoy good battery life from all of them. I feel like the best battery life is from HP. I don't, I wouldn't say 27 hours, but it is up there. And also that's granted that you've got a display that's not as bright, which adds to that flavor as well. So bear in mind, if you're looking for battery life, you're not gonna display that is vibrant or sharp enough. Now the Samsung with its 22 hour battery life doesn't really come close to that. In my use case scenario, it's about, been about 10 to 11 hours, which is still good, uh, but nothing close to the 20, 22 hour battery life that I was expecting. Maybe some updates will come to actually change that because it, it does have a very big battery, so it is capable. It, we just have to wait and see. Now the Lenovo Dell, uh, both have some really good battery life on them. Um, the Lenovo itself is close to, to about 14 hours. Uh, the Dell is also up there as well, uh, which is good to see. Asus also comes in around between, for my use case scenario, between 12 to 13 hours of battery life. And the Surface is one that's almost closer to the T of that 14. So overall, as a Windows user, for the first time, no matter what laptop you see here, you can pick it, you don't have to take your charger with you and you can use it at least for a full day. I think the, I think for me, the Lenovo is one I really enjoyed using most in terms of battery life because of the standby modes, which all of them have a do good job, but I really enjoyed using that while just, you know, working, closing it up, powering it off again, things like that. Now, performance. I know I mentioned I wouldn't state performance earlier, but you get, the general idea that the performance is similar to all of them. If you've seen other people's videos with benchmarks, the Snapdragon X Elite chips will be benchmarked a certain way. They are four different chips, and currently with all of them here, my Samsung has the more powerful chip. And if you watch my gaming video, that is the one that was able to do most of the gaming on, because that's the higher clock speed chipset, and um, that gives you a general idea. But in terms of functionality, they all relatively the same. So, all right, so that brings us to ranking. How do I rank these laptops? And I'll start off with my least favorite, the HP. The HP Omnibook, because number one, that screen is not bright at all. I cannot use it in a lot of circumstances. Now, moving to my number five spot, that goes to the Samsung Galaxy Book Edge. Because I'm not getting the amount of battery life that I should, and also the keyboard and trackpad don't really hit uh, the point home for me. Display is lovely and also does have the best performance in terms of chipset there because it's overclocked. The trackpad is center left, which is kind of annoying. So that takes the number five four spot. And my number four laptop is actually the Surface Pro. Now I do love the Surface Pro and I love the fact the Surface Pro also comes with the Surface Pen. I'll probably lean to the Surface Laptop, which I don't have here. And I think that's just probably the better choice. But if you're looking for a tablet, form factor, it does the job. Uh, but it takes my number four spot because of those things I mentioned. Number three goes to the Asus. 
The VivoBook S15 is a nice big laptop. It also has a ton of ports, lovely OLED display. That actually takes that spot for me. And leaving me with my number two spot is the Dell XPS 13. Yes, it probably has the worst speakers out of all of them, but it's so nice. And just look at how compact this thing is. This is my favorite laptop out of the bunch. It is just brighter, sharper, and covers most of the bases for me. I mean, just, just, just look at that, look, look at that, right? A lovely OLED display, the keyboard is really nice, battery life and performance has been great. I love it because it's also light and compact and I think a lot of people will like this too. I think there are a lot of good choices for people, for people looking for maybe larger screen sizes, longer battery life, all around features, you name it. Hopefully this video wasn't too long for you because I probably rambled, but I'm, and I hope this gives you just a better idea of what to pick in the market. So if you have any questions or any comments, let us know. I know I haven't covered all laptops that are powered by Snapdragon X Elite, but leave your thoughts down below and always enjoy entertainment.